next step for me is to mount the arms with all the motors which we now have uh, ready here onto the frame and uh, the first two that I want to mount are the center ones. I've already m gone ahead and I've mounted that one um, and I'm now going to show you how I mount this one because there's a bit of a trick there that I want to add and show you but uh, while I'm on that I have to also mention that it seems that something in these instructions on is not quite right because in the instructions yeah it says the arm length from where it exits the frame up to where it ends should be 269.75 millimeters. Now I've gone and tried measuring, measuring it in <laughs> various ways and from the tip and now let me just mark 270. Now that's 270 which is very close to the 269.75 which they show in the instructions and if you look there there's pretty much no way you can actually measure that because even if you take the the the, the motor and everything off here the entire pole itself is 270 millimeters so yeah um, and that created a bit of a headache for me because I don't know exactly how far this motor must stick out here. However, what I figured in the end, I'm going to do is on the inside, we just get onto this camera and we can see clearly. Now that's where the wires exit and I just matched it up to the inside there. So it's just even and I'm going to keep the other one even and that should give us even length on both sides. The other thing that I also did is I leveled this because obviously this arm can turn. Now fortunately I've checked on these arms and uh, they actually have a screw going through the arm so they cannot actually turn and uh, they are all pretty level already. Well, they are level. To get this arm level, I actually turned it upside down and made sure now fortunately there's there's a level part here into which you can put your level um, on a level surface this table isn't level but you could do this uh, elsewhere to get that uh, completely level and then before you tighten down all the things you first level this side and then you level it on the far side and um, if th that's level and this is level the shaft and everything should be level Right, so let me go ahead and show you how I mount this. Okay, the first thing that we have to do is before we try and stick in this arm, is loosen up these screws. And um, I've already, the, these have already had some Loctite applied to them. I loosened the whole lot and applied some Loctite, but you can still and I've already loosened them somewhat because I don't want to waste too much time on camera because I want this arm to slide in very easily and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so we loosen up all of these on both sides. You've got some screws on this side as well. Okay, so everything here is now pretty loose and you can split this apart a little. Okay, now through the cables. Let me just turn it a little this way. Through that one as well. And you see how easily that actually goes through. Let's get through the far side one. Okay. So it's 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 very very loose. Now and I'm turning it upside down because what I want to do now is I want to make a little bit of a mark. Now, it's, uh, I don't want a permanent mark. <laughs> it can, it's just where I... Right, I'm first going to 
make sure that that is down at that same distance right through it's just even there and I'm gonna make a little mark here just a little ways from the edge I'll show you exactly now why doesn't have to be a hefty scar just a little mark you can use a cokey or a sharpie or whatever you like but the reason is I want to pull it apart and I actually want to see where it is and I know the distance I have there and I'm gonna use sellotape now the reason I want to use sellotape just want just one little strand right uh, uh, all the way around so I can just find the edge of this is grip right so check where my mark is stick it out just this side of the mark okay I don't need a lot I just wanted to go around once okay, stick it out nicely tight all the way push it all the way around okay now I'm going to split that apart so I can get it in easily and I'm going to slide it in there now the reason I do that is the carbon fiber itself actually does not have much of a gripping surface it's it's smooth let me just go carbon that's smooth stuff so there, there's it, it doesn't have a springiness to it it doesn't give any so Anything that tries to grip onto that doesn't grip onto that very well. And that is why I have the sellotape. The sellotape just gives something which is going to give it grip. I'm just putting it on the outside. You can put it on the inside as well if you like. But uh, I feel that if it grips on the outside, I'm quite happy with that. Now before I tie this one down completely, I'm just going to uh, level it. I'm just going to tighten it slightly just so that... It doesn't turn as easily, but it can still turn. All right. Okay. Now the next thing that you then do is level this. Let's see if I can get a level spot on the table. Um, and I think the easiest way to do that for now, I'm going to use one on that side. One on this side. Let's see if it wobbles around. It actually doesn't wobble. That's nice. I didn't get it level there. Okay, I have actually gone and leveled my table so that I can actually show you this next process. So I'm going to put that down there. The level is great there. It's perfect. So we've got a level there. And now I'm going to check it on the far side. And I can see that it is not quite level. I need to twist it a little that way. Right. Now I've got it level on that side as well. I'm bringing it back to confirm that my level has not changed. That is level. And that is level. And I'm happy with that. Now that it is level, you can tighten this down so it doesn't turn again. Do this carefully so that you don't lose your level. However, when we're finished, we're going to check again. Okay, so that's pretty tight now. I'm going to confirm level. That's perfect, that's level. That's level on that side. I'm happy. And we can now tighten the whole thing down. Right. and I'm just going to confirm for a final time now that it's completely tightened down there's no way that's going to turn right and we have it level on both sides right you can do it any other way you like it's comfortable easy simple for you but basically if you have, have it level yeah and you have it level there your motor spin and your thrust should be pretty decent Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just tighten down all these screws again. Okay. 
right and now we turn it over and we can tighten it down on this side uh, if you look carefully <laughs> you'll actually see a little bit of a thread locker actually coming out there but we can clean that off later right I'll clean that up later okay and I'm just going to tighten down these screws all right and that's it that is how you get those two arms on once you have those two arms on adding the others is going to be pretty simple now I have chosen this to be the front this is going to be the front of my hexacopter and um, in keeping with uh, let's say traditional as everyone else has it I'm going to put the two arms with the red at the front normally I like these at the back but since this thing is so big I don't plan to fly it out that far it, the red is so small that uh, should I actually need an indication of where it is I will probably add something much bigger to the back of my hexacopter to actually indicate the rear so I'm going to keep the red ones to the front I'm going to attach one of these motors so you can just see what it looks like it's actually pretty simple now again just check your wires cables and this is the middle one on this side it goes between those two slides all the way through and let me just get those ones make sure that they are out of the way right um, now the hole that we need to use for the arms uh, if that is the front then the hole which is further away from here is the hole we're going to use not the closest one because if it's in that hole obviously you wanted to keep it as close to this arm as possible if it's on this arm it's not uh, going to close properly so you want to use that hole which is further from these braces okay um, get the screwdriver um, the two millimeter this is a two millimeter hex our thread locker dab of thread locker okay and because this screw also has that little stage as they call it or shoulder uh, that's what's going to enable it to move inside the frame so there's no thread to turn out, etc. Okay, keep that one side. Another screw. And that thread locker. right and there we go now if we look at it like this um, this is how it's going to click in so these motors are right next to each other it opens up that way and it's going to click in on that side all right now I'm not going to show you how I do all the other arms it's pretty much the same thing and I'll be back with you when I'm done with the rest right and there we have it our hexacopter now has all its motors all the arms attached and uh, they fold in very nicely and there you go that's the folded Hexacopter. Right guys, I'm happy and uh, we can proceed 
on to the next step.